So we've looked at a few assignment tasks and hopefully you've got an idea now of the kinds of um, themes, the kind of technologies and so on that could have an impact on any particular sector. So what we'll do now is look specifically at the sort of three remaining pestle factors that we didn't look at last week. So namely technology, not so much on the legal environment because it tends to be reflected in the other sectors as I said before, um, um, and particularly in the environmental sector. But we'll look, at the, uh, we'll look at technology and the environmental sector in particular, because those are the two areas that, well, attract the most interest and, and probably more kind of research as well that you can home in on when you're trying to find your particular theme. When we're, look, when we're talking about development in technology and emerging themes in technology, it, it, they, they tend to fall into these general um, areas. Not so much the detailed um, you know, topic of, of e-readers and so on, but things like emerging technologies like 3D printing, and I'll, sh I'll show you how that uh, works in a minute. <clears throat> um, nanotechnology is a massive field with lots of applications. It's developing very, very quickly. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, developments in computing, like quantum computing, is a, is a um, a big driver, not only in its own right as a theme, but is, is, is changing, is it having an impact on some other technologies and so on. Um, <clears throat> there's a concept called Moore's Law. Have you come across that before? Does anyone know what Moore's Law is? It's, um, <clears throat> Moore's Law is the idea that um, the amount of data you can get on a, on a chip, I, so computing power, change, you know, doubles every, every couple of years, basically. Uh, and this, guy's, uh, this guy Moore, his prediction in the late 50s, 60s was that um, the ability, you know, the computing power would double all the way up until about 2015, 2020. So it's kind of coming to the end of its curve, if you like, in the ability to, you know, just exponentially change computing power. Um, and sort of quantum computing is the next big leap in that sort of cycle if you like so so we'll look a little bit about that and you know um you know what the technology is behind quantum computing the other thing that we'll touch on briefly is is uh, biotechnology now biotechnology is the, the science behind genetically modified food and so on and also the, the, there's a big sort of ethical debate about uh, gm food isn't there in in the states they tend to be less skeptical about it than, than we are in Europe. I mean, there's lots going on in the biotech world and also lots of ethical issues as well. So, you know, if that's an area of interest for you, then, you know, there's, a, the, you know, there's, there's lots of research, lots of websites that you can go to and find out about the, you know, the technologies, the, the application of it and the issues and, you know, what the trends are like. But another area that is attracting a lot of attention now and is, is in, in some sectors is already starting to be applied so it's not necessarily an emerging theme in every sector um, but nano, nanotechnology is, is a, a, a big area of development. Well the basic science behind nanotechnology is that th at the nano level things change so for example the properties of uh, silver when it's broken down to its nano level change and it turns out that it has great healing properties did you realise that? So, <clears throat> um, and that's been kind of commercialised now. So you'll get plasters with a strip of silver in. Have you seen those? You can get plasters with, with this little bit of silver in. And I'm not sure quite how it works, but the, the, um, uh, it, it has a, a, a benefit in sort of healing wounds and so on and so forth. But it has lots of other um, applications as well. Um, do you know, for example, that uh, it's used in paint? nanotechnology is used in paint. So EasyJet, a couple of years ago, 
started using um, nanotechnology or, or paint based on nanotechnology to um, paint their entire paint their entire fleet. And what it what it well what do you think what do you think it does? What's the point of using a nano based? Yes, yeah. Apparently, nanotechnology paint sticks better to the the surface of the. Um, of the plane, making it more uh, aerodynamic, and EasyJet um, estimated that they were going to save something like 26 million pounds a year in fuel costs because the planes were going to be that much more aerodynamic. The other um, side of technology is, of course, is its application in, in marketing. We talked about this the other week, didn't we, about um, how you can now use some of these um, MRI scanning sort of technologies to, um, you know, effectively look inside people's brains. I mean, the, the idea of um, neuro linguistic program, as it's called, is already here and now, isn't it? And I suppose one of the big things stopping it going, get, becoming further adopted, well, there's two, two things really that we touched on that is kind of affecting this sort of technology. What, what are they? Co yeah, cost, because it's relatively very expensive compared to research. And what's the other thing? It's, it's not good for uh, health. Uh, well, I don't know if there's any sort of health issues. There might, there might well be. It's more the, um, the ethical debate, really. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's a, what's, the, what's the sort of big issue with... with being able to get into people's subconscious or influence. Whether it's right to exploit that for, for market gain, is it worth it, you know, for Yeah, to what degree is it exploitation? To what degree do we want to be able to shape people's subconscious um, views, which is, which is effectively where this technology could lead? But this, if you could see the kind of things that were highlighted, if you could project what you want into someone's brain, because if you can see the oh. indentations, it's like, this had this effect on yeah. it. You could then create a blueprint that gives the desired effect by yeah, pushing yeah. certain... Well, precisely. And, yeah. and, and the issue for marketers is that, you know, we talked before about the huge cost of investing in new technology, innovation, and so on and so forth. If you had a way to mitigate that cost by sort of saying, OK, are consumers really going to like our new hydrogen-powered car? We'll do some MRI scans. We'll find out what really makes them tick, what they will really respond to, versus doing some market research. And we know how fickle people are, and we know there's lots of examples of where people haven't done what they said they would do in, in research. Product fails. Companies don't want to take that risk. It's such a huge gamble. So there's a there's a drive from the marketing industry to kind of have this surety, isn't there? You can also argue that it's anti-competitive because the the big behemoth companies globally, the McDonald's, the Nikes, etc., are going to have the money and the resource and the time and the capital to put behind this, which means that the smaller companies, you know, not necessarily the, the competitors to Coca-Cola or whatever, but, you know, take another example, whatever it is, but, you know, the more power and the capex that you've got behind you, it's, it's going to squeeze the smaller players out, which in turn becomes anti-competitive. Yeah, although technology is becoming a great equaliser and liberator, isn't, isn't it? So, you know, how long before anybody could um, use 3D because printing we technology in their back bedroom? Collusion, <clears throat> weren't we? we were just talking about collusion amongst the R&D companies um, and different sort of te technology IP holders um, to say, you know, the phone companies as well to kind of say, you know, well, you're not releasing this yet because mm. it's mm. kind of, so, you know, is it? So, um, it well, is the it thing is, it's, um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're right. Both scenarios are, are um, very real and very plausible, aren't they? Mm. It depends on the sector and it depends on how um, well the sector is kind of seeing the future and responding to it, isn't it? Isn't it ultimately? How are they, how are they spotting the, the trends in technology and the trends in consumer behaviour and bringing that together and saying, well, actually, we could do this. But again, you know, the underlying message is it's all changing very, very quickly. And in 20 years time, it'll be changing even more quickly. So that, you know, the, the time to react and respond is getting shorter and shorter all the time.